Welcome again to the Discipline of Forgiveness. We're discussing the general topic of forgiveness, why it's so important, and keys that will help us to extend forgiveness. Because I believe that unforgiveness opens us up to spiritual oppression. I, I have been for many years working with people in deliverance ministry, and I have found without exception that every one of them that are oppressed by demonic spirits needs to exercise forgiveness in some area of their life. In fact, unforgiveness, it says in Hebrews 12, opens us up. It's a bitter root that causes us to be defiled and unclean. And I have found that it's that unforgiveness that in many ways opens the doors for spirits of oppression and other demonic spirits to enter into a person's life. And that when forgiveness is exercised, that they can experience release from that spiritual oppression. That's one of the most important reasons why I've seen forgiveness is necessary. In fact, when it says that that bitter root grows up and causes to be defiled, unclean, think about that. They're called unclean spirits. And the last thing any one of us as a Christian wants to do that's been freed from the powers of darkness because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ is to walk in and allow demons back in our lives. Forgiveness is a big step in allowing us to exercise and to walk in the freedom that Christ has made available. Unforgiveness is like having a cup of poison, drinking it, thinking that it's going to be beneficial to me. That's insane. Who would ever do that? Who would ever take a pill of arsenic or strychnine thinking that it's going to be like a vitamin? You, you know, unforgiveness, I'm telling you, is absolutely, it's poison to your very soul. It's poison to your being. Unforgiveness manifests itself in physical stressors, in, in, in diseases, in illness, in all kinds of problems. We have absolutely got to learn how to discipline ourselves to forgive. Why? Because it is a path to freedom for you. Now, one of the things that I have found that has that people struggle with forgiving is because when someone does something wrong to me, I believe it creates in the spiritual realm a debt. And as I was reading Matthew nine six, Matthew chapter six, verse nine through fifteen, is the record where Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. And remember, in that prayer, he says, "Forgive us our debts." See, an offense is a debt. When I have a friend and they wrong me, they literally create a spiritual debt. If we have been in equilibrium, in balance in our relationship, the minute that they sin, it creates a debt. There's a deficit on their side. And they have a moral, spiritual responsibility to, to make things right. When I am forgiving, I'm releasing the debt. Now let me ask you, Sometimes, like I said, unforgiveness is like drinking poison. Unforgiveness is like being the debt collector, sitting at the desk, calling people up all day long who have no ability to repay you, but yet you're going to demand repayment. That's insanity. You know, how can a person, a woman who's ever been raped, expect to be paid back for that? It's impossible. Yet forgiveness breaks that, that event and it takes that debt and puts it over where it properly needs to be collected in God's column. God's the master accountant and he's going to level all accounts. And unforgiveness, my friends, is if we're sitting there trying to collect on debts that are impossible to collect on. How can a child who's ever been abused or any person who's ever been harmed or abused ever have some of those situations made right again? You can say you're sorry. You can even make some amends. You can even have financial retribution, you know, payback. But it's not really going to restore to you all the years that, that were removed or all the pain or trauma of a person's heart and soul. Forgiveness is basically releasing the debt. They still have a moral responsibility, but I am refuse to be the debt collector anymore. It's not my responsibility to collect on that debt. And if you'll remember that and give the account over to, to the Lord Jesus Christ and to God, let them collect on it, then it frees you and it, it breaks you from that event. Remember, he'll take care of it and he is the righteous judge. Also, another sticking point that I have found is that people say, well, I'm not going to forgive someone because I don't trust them. I didn't ask you to trust them. 
God asks you to forgive them. See, trust and forgiveness, those are two completely different things. You know, trust is based on a person's character. Trust is also based on competency. There's different elements to trust. Forgiveness is not trusting. I can forgive a person and have no trust for them. Why? Because they have proven themselves untrustworthy, yet I can forgive them. I'm not going to hold it against them. Trust is a matter of them working to restore the relationship. Now, I have heard some people say, well, I forgive them, but I'm never going to trust them again. And I would challenge you, because I know I've said that, and I would challenge you that if you say that, then I would say, I don't think you're really forgiving them. Forgiving is being willing to trust a person again, provided that certain conditions are met, provided that they work to rebuild that bridge of trust, provided that they restore or, or work towards their, to rebuild character and competency and demonstrate that they are trustworthy. Forgiveness is a prerequisite to building, rebuilding a relationship, but forgiveness is not trust, so just forget that. I use the example of a person who's been raped or abused. You know, who would ever expect a person to trust an abuser like that? That's, that's insane. I've had situations where an individual has come to uh, our fellowship who's been a pedophile. Okay, people make mistakes. You know, they committed a sexual sin against a child. Well, I can forgive them and everyone in the fellowship can forgive them. And they may have even uh, walked it out and, and, and paid the penalty through the legal system. But am I going to put that person in charge of our children's fellowship or children's activities? See, that, that, that would be unwise. I don't trust them in that, and nor would it be appropriate to do that. Forgiving and trust are two different matters, and you can forgive a person without trusting them. And another thing is that people say, think that if you forgive, you need to reconcile. Forgiveness and reconciliation, again, are two different concepts. Reconciliation is a matter of relationship, and relationship is built upon certain prerequisites. Forgiveness is a prerequisite to reconciliation, but it is not reconciliation. Reconciliation requires, like trust, that certain precursors or, or certain parameters be uh, rebuilt. Uh, it's a pre forgiveness is the prerequisite for reconciliation. So as you think about these things, there are a couple keys that I would like to give you that will help you as you learn to forgive another person, things that I've learned in my life. Number one, if there's a person who's offended you, pray for them, pray for them, pray for them. Every time it comes up, you pray for them. Number two, say it out loud, I forgive so-and-so. And remember, every time it comes up, say it. If you have to say it to yourself, say it quietly, but you say, I forgive so-and-so, because as the mouth speaks, it will change the heart. You pray for them and you say it out loud. Picture the other person and, and, and actually physically, if you can't be with them, picture them. If you can be with them, to whatever extent is available, then if it's appropriate, fine. You can extend forgiveness. But if you don't have to be with a person to extend forgiveness to that person. If I have run into situations where a person has a forgiveness blockage because they can't forgive the adult, then I would coach you, picture them as a child. Because after all, inside our hearts, a lot of us are just still, still small kids. I know myself, you know, I might be 56 years old, but there's still a little, little kid inside of me that still got bullied and picked on, you know, and I have to fight against that at times. So many times I've seen where I've had an individual who can't extend forgiveness to a person, I can remember one specific instance, they could not forgive an adult woman, and I coached them, and once they remembered that person as a five-year-old child, the innocent child who was also abused and everything else, they could extend forgiveness. Forgiveness is something that, as Jesus said, you have to mean it in your heart. Feel it, viscerally feel it, in your viscera, your insides. When you say it, you mean it. Pray for them, say it out loud, do it as often as necessary. It's a choice, you can make it. Let them off your hook. Put them on God's hook. Discipline yourself to forgive. Some days I forget that I'm free. And sometimes 
My feet don't wanna carry me back.